In this video, we'll add a main menu into our game. We'll also be adding a level select menu. So let's begin. To get started, we're going to need to upload a few new sprites. So let's upload some sprites. And these sprites are found in the spaceship art pack larger. And the first sprite we're going to need is a play button. So you can choose either the red or blue one. I'm going to go with the blue one. And after that, we can go and import five more sprites. And these sprites aren't part of the official space art pack larger file. These are add-ons which are created and the link is in the description for these files. And they're just called the level button. So we can import all of this. So just press on the first one, shift, select the rest of them. And now let's go ahead and resize all of them and rename them. So I'm going to rename this first one to play button and the rest of them are already renamed. So we don't need to edit them and we can change the size of this to 65. And let's move it downwards. So we'll change its position in the X to zero so that it's centered and the Y to negative 85. And for the rest of the buttons, we'll start with level one. Level one will give it negative 155 and Y zero. Number two will give it zero and zero. Level three button will make the Y zero, but we would want the X to be 155. We can go to our level four button and make this negative 81 and our Y negative 85. And the final button level five will make this positive 81 and positive 81 on the X. So let me change that on the X and our Y shall be negative 85. Now we have all of our level buttons in the correct place and the play button. We'll just want to draw one sprite so we can go to the paint option and we can rename this sprite to the game title. So you're free to name your game whatever you want. We can just go to the text button and make it white by decreasing the saturation and we'll call this game Space Defenders. We'll call this Space Defenders. So after we've done that, we can just select all of it because since it's in white, we can not see it and then we can change it to pixel. Select it again and now we can just resize it, but center it, resize it a bit more and that should be fine. Now we would change its position on the Y, we can make this 100 and center it in the X. And we'll rename this costume to game title and create another costume. So we can just call this one level select. So we can just say level and then select and resize this and move it right here and rename this to level select. Now we can go to our code and start coding a few of a few of these buttons so the first thing we need to do before we get to that is go to our player and we can see in one of the previous scripts we've wrote we said when flag is clicked set can play a shoot to false and i said that will make sense later and right now we would want the player to not be able to shoot when the flag is clicked we wouldn't want the player to be able to shoot because the player shouldn't even be there. So we can go to looks and we can hide it. Now we need to go to our asteroids and we don't want our asteroids to continue falling while the level select menu or main menu is showing. So we can go to variables and create a variable as we did for the mothership and other enemies. We'll call it should spawn asteroids. And we can click OK. And there are only two things we need to do here. The first being going to operators, adding an OR operator. 
and putting it in this if statement where we actually destroy the asteroid and we say if touching bullet or and then get an equals operator and go to the should spawn asteroids and we look if it equals to false if there are any asteroids that are there while we're switching to the level select menu we would want them to explode so that's the first thing we need to do and secondly we don't want any asteroids actually spawning if should spawn asteroids equals to false so we can go grab another if statement in control and go to operators select the equals to operator and go to the should spawn asteroids and if it equals to true then make sure it's a capital true though and if it does equal to true then we can actually spawn these asteroids and we would need to drag this into the second asteroid so just drag this into our left asteroid and these are the new ones these two right here and we can delete the old ones the one that does that only destroys when there's a bullet and the one that spawns regardless if should spawn asteroids equal to true or not now that we've got that covered we just need to switch up a bit of code in our backdrop but first let's go to our player and we have somewhere where we say when flag is clicked we broadcast start game get that out of here we don't need that anymore we got a play button for that so let's go to the backdrops and we need to edit the script we have here so we can delete this as well and start afresh so first we would go to our events and say when i receive start game and then go to variables and we'll set a few variables first being star speed multiplier and we'll set this to one and would we'll set a few more so grab five set blocks and put them right under here so the first one is asteroids that's fine and then we'd want spike shooters destroyed spaceships destroyed motherships destroyed and the final one being spaceship droppers destroyed so all of this should be set to zero when i receive start game and then we can go to events and say when flag is clicked we go to variables again and set two variables and the first one would be star speed multiplier and we'll set this to 0.5 or 0 0.5 can work too and then we can set should spawn asteroids and we should set this to capital F false and then we can disable all of the variables and click on the flag now we can see that we don't have any asteroids moving and the stars are moving slower than before and this is just so that we have a cool effect when we click the play button the stars will move faster now let's work on the code for our brand new buttons so we can go to our game title first and set it to the game title and go to our play button and first we'd go to the code and go to events and say when flag is clicked we want to show it we want to show our play button and we want to wait until it's pressed so in order to do that we go to control and select the wait until and go to operators and get an and operator now go to sensing and see if mouse is down and it's touching the mouse pointer this is just to see if it's clicking and once it is clicked we broadcast a brand new message and this message will be called level select menu and then click on ok and now would we'll basically broadcast level select menu and we can go to looks and hide it after we broadcast level select menu and that's all we need now if we go to the flag nothing really has changed except that the play button disappears when it's clicked now we can go to our game title 
and go to events and select the when flag is clicked and the when I receive level select menu. So we can go to our looks and select show and go to switch costume to game title and switch costume to level select when it rece receives level select. And then we can go back to our events and say when I receive start game and that's when we can finally hide it. Now let's do the code for our level buttons. So we would start off with level one and go to events and we say when flag is clicked and we can go to looks and say hide it. And then we can go to control and select a forever loop and we grab an if and else block. Now we need to look if a condition is true and we'll find this through a brand new variable and we'll call this variable level one, level one unlocked, question mark. And then we can just copy this and make another variable, paste it, but then change it to level two. Do it again, but change it to level three. Do it again, change it to level four do it one more time and make this one level five and click OK. Now just deselect the rest of these levels and bring out level one unlocked. And then we can go to the sensing and go to an equals operator. So if level one unlocked equals to true, we can go to our looks and set the brightness and this is what we're going to use to make it darken when it's not available to be clicked. So if it's unlocked, we can set it to zero and duplicate this. And if it's not unlocked, we can set it to negative 50 and it will become darkened. Now go to events and would we'll call two messages will look when they are received. And the second one being when I receive start game. Now we can go to looks and show it when I receive a level select menu, but hide it when I receive start game. And then we can go to the control and select the forever loop and grab this if statement. And we're going to look through two if statements. And then if they're both true, then we can broadcast level one. So what we need to look if we go to operators and select an and operator and put them in both and then select an equals to operator and then just put them in the second and statement two equals operators. And we need to look if level one unlocked equals to true and can play a shoot equals to false. And then we can go to sensing and just look if we're being touched. So if touching mouse pointer and mouse is down, then we can finally broadcast level one. So this should only work for these two and we can see it's working fine. It's just the rest of these buttons aren't working properly. So let's drag this to level two, one, two, and three, do the same for level three, one, two, three. And we can do this for level four as well. So one, two, and three. And if we go to level five, there should be a problem. So we should bring level five upwards so we can drag it in. So we can't drag anything down here. Scratch has a problem, but you can drag it into level five with no problem as long as it's higher. So now we have all the levels we need. Level one through five. So now that we have all this set up, we just need to edit the information. We can just drag this out. And instead of looking if level one is unlocked, let's look if level two is unlocked. 
and look here if level two is unlocked and instead of broadcasting level one we broadcast a new message called level two now we need to do this for level three instead of looking if level one is unlocked look if level three is unlocked and look if level three is true and broadcast level three just going to do that for level four and five and now that we've done this for all the levels level five level four level three two and one we should have a working level selecting menu so we can click the flag we can click play and all of them should be unlocked currently so let's go to our backdrop to edit one more thing and we say when flag is clicked we want to for now set level one unlocked to equal to true and we can put this right under the set asteroids to false and all we need to do is go to events and when i receive level one let's just broadcast start game and then we should set asteroids should spawn asteroid to true and that should get us back to where we were previously where the asteroids are falling and there we go now we can move left and right and shoot the asteroids and there we go that's it for this video thank you very much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss when the next video will drop and the next video will be implementing level one and level two and there will be different enemies coming at different times so make sure to stay tuned for that goodbye mm -hmm.